Hey, what's up, guys? Um, right now, we're gonna draw a. We're gonna learn how to draw a sugar skull. So, what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna lay it in with pencil. I'm using just a uh, normal uh, mechanical pencil, really cheap. There's no specific lead. The lead's kind of irrelevant. Uh, and I'm gonna go really lightly. Make a circle. You probably can't even see it. I'm making it so. Uh, I'm making it so light, I can barely see it myself here in person. And the reason for that, the reason for that is I kind of want as little line as possible to show up in the beginning. These are just construction, construction lines. Um, and yeah, that's about it. They're just meant for construction, nothing else. Something for me to find my placement, you know? So I start with a ball, put a little line here for the bottom of the chin. Uh, the good thing about most sugar skulls is that they don't have to be anatomically correct. A lot of them are not. A lot of them are drawn very rounded, uh, more like representations of a skull than an actual skull. So this one's a little different. All right, and that's it. This is, uh, you can barely, I don't, I don't think you can see it at all, but very, very faint land, land lines. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in with a marker and this is uh, more or less a Sharpie, pretty much. I used to use these for uh, caricaturing at SeaWorld when I uh, used to caricature uh, kids. So we're not going to make this too cartoony, but it will be cartoony. So I'm going to start with a marker and start with outlining the eyes. It's one eye socket. Top of the nose. Here's a good example of just making a shape that represents the nasal cavity. Uh, that's not actually, you know, the way I would draw it if I was drawing a real uh, anatomy skull. It's just a more of a triangle here, straight triangle. And the other eye socket is going to be uh, just a hole like that. And then I'm going to go down here to the zygomatic arch. The zygomatic arch is basically another word for the cheekbone. I'm drawing this uh, muzzle area, they call it, the kind of the kind of the mouth area, the teeth, the cylinder that you, you know, you have the, your row of teeth. I'm making it really round. This is where I'm going to really start stylizing, you know. Again, it's about representation of what's there, not actually what is. And the other side of the zygomatic arch, along with the, uh, I'm not sure what this bone is called, basically. It's this side of the eye socket, you know? Kind of looks, you know, I'm, I'm actually, normally there's like a break right here. It kind of looks like two french fries touching, but uh, right now I'm going to leave it as so. I'm trying to make it a little more stylized. The other kind of eyebrow bone there. No eyebrow bone, but you know, bone for the eyebrow. And then this is going to be, I'm going to draw the skull a little rounder than I normally would because I am. Cool. I tried to hit that in one stroke because, uh, you know, I'm using a marker. And if I delay, it's going to give off this kind of gross. If I let it, if I pause, it'll soak into the paper more ink, you know, no matter what you're using. Uh, so I, I want to keep it moving, and I have to know what direction I'm moving in. So, and I don't get two tries because it's a marker. I'm gonna do the chin, and then the side of the jaw here. And again, those are all kind of stylized. All right. Now I have my general construction. I'm gonna connect this line where, you know. Now I'm, I got my general construction down, so I can kind of go into smaller details. So that's the kind of cavity where the jaw is, you know, kind of behind the row of teeth. And this one's going to be really, really stylized. I'm treating that like a, almost like a ball in his mouth, really, and that's going to be the uh, his teeth.
being really careful of those lines I'm trying to make it make trying to make it really wrap I want to make it like these lines are kind of wrapping around the form like they're kind of like a part of it or let's see and so at this point I'm gonna kind of mess around I got a general idea you know I got a really good foundation you know this is a sugar skull it's not gonna be anatomically sound uh, so now I'm gonna mess around with designing on it Maybe something like so, another swirl. Drawing this flower shape around the eye sockets. Do it around there. And I'm going to make it match the other side, even though it's in a three-quarter view. Oops. Went over the line a little bit there. All right. Then I'm going to keep drawing, uh, keep drawing another design. Let's see. And just a little swirly shape. Upside down question mark almost. I am going to draw a web on his lower jaw. I'm actually pulling the lines a lot lighter. I'm pushing down on the marker a lot less so that I... Uh, the bolder line, the structure, it has a darker line, and the uh, kind of lines drawn on it are a little lighter. I didn't do that with the uh, eyes, though, but it'll be fine. Now I'm more or less just kind of messing around. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what shape it's going to go where. I want to kind of picture these images kind of drawn on a solid object. Let me think. Yeah, and that symbol there. Let me draw another web back here. Another web over here. Ooh, went a little bit over the line on that one. It'll be it'll be okay. Little mistakes happen here and there. All right. I want to put something in the center of his head. So I feel like that's just a big uh, kind of open space. Uh, I'm going to put a cross there. Those are normally religious symbols are put on these skulls. Another swirl. I want to make these swirls kind of connect to something sometimes, though. So. Connect off to the edge. Hmm. And I'm going to do something else. Now, what I want to do from here is I want to make certain shapes pop. So I'm going to actually darken in the eye sockets. So the other stuff will read better. Darkening it in. Uh, I want to make sure it doesn't look too much like he has sunglasses on. Hopefully it'll read as uh, just, a, just a hole, pretty much. Uh, 
Uh, same thing for the nasal cavity, you know? Right now he, uh... I don't think anybody could breathe through that anyway, to be honest. And now that I darken it in, I see kind of a... It just seems very bare over here around his teeth, so... I'm gonna actually... Place another line. Normally I would actually fill the teeth out, but I'm gonna place another line. As if someone painted the teeth on there. Alright. Uh, and, you know, from this point you can do anything. Uh, I'm gonna actually put a background. I'm gonna put a solid background to make the entire front pop out. Make sure that that line goes all the way through. I'm not gonna draw it all the way through, but I'm gonna make sure it makes some sense. Let's see. And this is more just composing your page. You know what I mean? What would make sense? Uh, like, would it make sense to me col to color it in? I, I think it might. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna fill in the background as well. So. Uh, this might take me a little bit because. This is kind of a large area, so kind of bear with me. Uh, actually, this is, you know, while I'm filling this in, I could tell you one little thing about when uh, the last time I used some of these markers were. Uh, this marker is just essentially a black uh, Sharpie, but th this particular marker is the one I used when I was caricaturing at SeaWorld in San Diego. Uh, I used to do a lot of caricatures. Uh, I mean, like, you know, we used to do, like, 30 or 40 a day. We'd draw 30 or 40 people a day. Um, caricaturing, if you've never done it, it's uh, it's a lot of fun. If you're an artist, I would recommend doing it for, like, you know, six months just to allow learn the craft and, uh, you know, really experiment. And it, it makes you very confident with your lines. And it also makes you very confident using a marker because you're basically sitting in front of people kind of... Uh, you know, they're hiring you, and they're sitting right in front of you, and it's kind of nerve-wracking, you know. Uh, they expect something within a few minutes, and they can, you know, they have the power to turn that down if they don't want. If they don't like the drawing, they can just turn it right down. So, but it, it will give you a, a huge amount of confidence in, your, in everything else uh, that you're doing. And I, I thought it was one of the healthiest thing, things for me to do. also makes you really talkative, too. You have to talk while you're drawing when you're doing that. And uh, that was really helpful for me, you know? Because I was dead quiet. And it's actually kind of a... I wouldn't say it's an art, but it's like another skill to be able to hold a conversation while you're drawing. Um, at least f uh, for me, you know? For me, it was everything takes time. So I'm just about almost done with this. Leaving an edge there to show some kind of differentiation between the eye socket and the black background. All right, let me see. I'm looking at it right now, and something just seems to be missing. Uh, I'm going to throw some random dots around the mouth because I just feel in a designly way, there's too much activity going on on top. There needs to be more on the bottom to kind of even it out. I'm actually going to darken these swirly shapes I colored in before, or I traced in. Alright, and uh, that's pretty much a decent sugar skull, I think. Uh, you know, you can make your own. I, the designs, I basically pulled them out of my head. So, just do what you can, and uh, you don't have to be... Uh, things to remember, you don't have to be anatomically correct for this type of skull. This is a